Hello and welcome back to Shakespeare. We are still working on Macbeth and we are still in Act 4, Scene 1, and we get to hear again from Macbeth. So he has gone to see the three sisters again because remember they prophesied that he was going to become king, but they also prophesied that Banquo's children were going to be kings, not that Macbeth's children were going to be kings. So he, in in his suspicion, in his I don't want to have done this for somebody else's kids, Ness, he had Banquo killed, but Banquo's son, Fleance, was able to escape. Meanwhile, Duncan, who Macbeth also killed, uh, his sons, Malcolm and Donalbane, have escaped. Malcolm went to England, Donalbane went to Ireland. Malcolm is hanging out in England with King Edward, and Macduff has gone there also, and the three of them are like building an army to come and invade Scotland, and Macbeth is also prepping for this war. But he has gone to see the sisters, and we got to hear some very famous lines from the sisters a couple of days ago when we were doing this. They've been conjuring, and they conjured up some spirits to tell Macbeth the next things that are, that are gonna happen. First, they brought forth an armed head that said, uh, watch out for Macduff, and then they conjured the image of a bloody child who said, um, no man of woman born can injure Macbeth. And then they summoned a child wearing a crown who said that uh, Macbeth didn't have anything to worry about until the woods came to the hill. Um, and, and Macbeth is like, are you kidding? Like, all men are of woman born, so that eliminates everybody from being able to kill me. And second of all, I have to worry when the woods come to attack, like woods don't move. A forest doesn't just get up and walk. That's that's Lord of the Rings, that's not Macbeth. So anyway, he's feeling pretty good about himself. But then as, he, as he's getting ready to go, he turns back around and he's like, hold on just one more second. You prophesied before the Banquo's kids were gonna become kings. Like, is that still a thing? And the witches conjure up this parade of 10 ghosts that go in front of him and they are all dressed as kings. And while these ghosts are passing in front of him, Macbeth says, thou art too like the spirit of Banquo, down. Thy crown to sear mine eyeballs and thy hair. Thou other gold bound brow is like the first. A third is like the former. Filthy hags, why do you show me this? A fourth, start eyes. What, will the line stretch out to the crack of doom? Another yet, a seventh, I'll see no more. And yet the eight appears, who bears a glass, which shows me many more. And some I see that twofold balls and treble scepters carry. Horrible sight, now I see tis true. For the blood boltered Banquo smiles upon me and points at them for his. What is this so? So basically he's just narrating this parade and he sees the first ghost that goes by looks very much like Banquo, as does the second, as does the third, and he starts to get really angry at the sisters and he's like, is this just, is, is it gonna be Banquo's lineage ruling Scotland forever? Um, and the last, the last one that comes in is holding a mirror in which he sees many, many, many more kings and he sees Banquo being like, uh, got you, got you, nya, 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 kind of a thing, and, and Banquo claiming all of these kings as, as his kin. So Macbeth is now kind of shaken, I would say, is fair. While he still doesn't think that there is a person that can get at him, because no man of woman born can get him, and he has to wait until the trees come to attack, he is, he is upset that everything that he's done, I mean, he became, a, he committed regicide so that Banquo's lineage would rule over Scotland forever. And that's really not what he wanted to do that for. So he's, he's very angry at the sisters and he yells at them a little bit and they all just disappear because they can and they don't want to deal with them anymore. But then Lennox comes in and remember Lennox was talking to a lord the other day, and they are both pretty much convinced that Macbeth killed Duncan, which he did, um, but they are also the ones that let us, the audience, know that Macduff had gone to England to work with Malcolm and King Edward to raise an army against Macbeth. Um, Lennox comes in and shares that nude news with Macbeth uh, at the end of this scene, and then Macbeth gets one more little monologue 
before we are done with Act 4, Scene 1, and we will get into that one tomorrow to see if, if the weight of all of the Banquoian kings is weighing on him heavily or if he feels good about not getting killed by a man who was born by a woman. Anyway, I'll see you tomorrow to finish off the scene. See you then.